And literally nobody on the planet better than Mr. Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor, and Ms. Katie Pavlich, editor at townhall.com and Fox News contributor. So uh, I've given you more numbers than any human being deserves. I apologize, but sometimes facts matter once in a while. And I just kind of, you know, <laughs> I've had a sinus infection. I just thought I'd go and drive it all crazy in delirium and give you all the facts. But Katie, let me begin with you. I'm very interested in the in, uh, impact on the election, which is in a couple of weeks, of this inflation number and the inflation situation in general. What you thinking? Well, we've seen for months that inflation is the number one priority when it comes to what voters are going to head to the polls and cast their ballot for. Uh, you've seen in a number of uh, debates that Democrats are at least willing to have, the one in Ohio this week between Tim Ryan, Democrat running for the U.S. Senate seat, and J.D. Vance. Uh, he tries to claim that he's, you know, stood up to the party line, the big government socialist spending from Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi, and yet he's voted with them 100 percent of the time, which J.D. Vance took the opportunity to point out. Today is the one year anniversary of White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain saying on Twitter that inflation is a high class problem, mm. downplaying it for the rest of the country when American families are paying 30 percent more for their utility bills and it's not even winter yet. So when it comes to all the stats and data and facts that you laid out uh, so eloquently, Larry, those are so important, but people are are feeling those things at home every single time they go to feed their children, every time they fill up their gas tank to go to work. And the only response from Democrats, including President Joe Biden today, is that Republicans will somehow make it worse, uh, while they also continue to tout that Republicans voted against the Inflation Reduction Act, which we know was really a celebration of inflation and by all accounts will make inflation worse. So the message from Republicans is that if you vote for them, they will try to rein in the spending from a one-party town in Washington, and therefore hopefully prices will go down. Uh, as a result for American families who are hurting at every single level. Yeah, we'll look at, um, Charlie, first of all, Katie's right. Uh, it's, the, it's the kitchen table stuff that really matters. People know instinctively. I just did all those numbers to show you I could do it. I used to do that for a living many years ago when I worked on Wall Street and occasionally in the government, so I just thought I'd have some fun. But, 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 but Charlie Hurt, um, this inflation disease, I think, is more virulent in more ways, particularly in terms of lower uh, living standards, people do know how hard it is to make household budgets, which is what Katie was inferring. They do know right. electricity prices are up. They do know that gas prices are up. Uh, I know they've come off some, but they're still a lot higher than they were a year or two ago. And they know that food and grocery prices are up. And they know that, you know, the pocketbook doesn't stretch as far. And to me, that's going to be right. lethal on whatever it is, November 8th or November 9th. But uh, is there a counter view here? I mean, what do Democrats think is going to happen? They're all whooping up for, you know, standing up for joy at today's CPI report? <laughs> yeah, well, unlike Joe Biden and Democrats in Washington, you know, regular families, they can't even pretend to hide from these uh, increases in inflation and gas prices. They can't. And of course, obviously, they also can't print money. Uh, the way Joe Biden and Democrats in Congress are perfectly happy to do, which, of course, makes the problems even worse. You know, all, every single one of these problems that you outlined can be traced directly to the policies mm -hmm. of Joe Biden mm -hmm. and Democrats in Congress mm -hmm. over, the, over, over just two years. And it's so obvious. And the only thing worse than these people absolutely wrecking the economy, ushering in higher inflation than we have seen in 40 years in a lot of people's lives is to is to do that and then to pretend that you didn't or to pretend that everything is great. And so when Joe Biden comes out today and talks about how inflation is at 2 percent or something like that, when it's at 8.2 percent, that kind of cavalier dismissal of those people that, that, as you point out, Katie, who have to fill up their gas tank or pay the grocery bill every week and they cannot believe what they're having to pay to feed their families, they can't hide from that. And Democrats can't hide from that. And that's why what you're seeing today, if you look on other channels on, on cable television, they're talking about what? January 6th. That's how desperate <laughs> yeah. they are. Right. They are, they, they are good. dying right. to talk about that stuff because they can't talk about the economy. Yeah. It's killing them. You know, one thing uh, yeah. in my, in my under-the-hood mix of too many statistics 
it really is more expensive to operate a car. I mean, that may sound mundane, but <laughs> it's, it's, every, look, everybody owns a car, and nearly everybody owns a gas, uh, gasoline-fired car, combustion engine car. And you know, Katie, you look through those numbers, um, the interest rates to buy a car are up, car prices are up, used car prices are down, but the maintenance, the repair, and the insurance are all way up. So it's like really expensive. So you have a problem with electricity prices, you have a problem with your refrigerator, uh, you also have a problem with your automobile. And Americans own all, Americans eat food, need heat, and drive cars. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The inflation report says 0 for yeah. 3, 0 for 3. Give you the last word. Well, on the issue of the cars, I mean, don't forget that that is intentional. This is an administration that has made very clear yes, that they want exactly. all Americans driving electric vehicles. And if the cost of gas is too high, their response repeatedly has been, we'll go out and buy an electric car that you also can't afford. And by the way, let's not talk about the fact that the electricity you're going to have to put in that car is also going to be very expensive and unavailable, like in California, because the grid is overloaded as a result of these green policies. But if you look at, uh, you know, housing, for example, you know, the big question is, where does this end? Because inflation is still out of control. You talked about the Fed. The Fed keeps raising interest rates. I was in Arizona two weekends ago on a two-hour drive, and it reminded me a lot of the 2008 crisis because there's all these new developments that are halfway built, and there's hundreds oh. of homes that people now cannot afford to buy. Mm. And so there's this looming issue that we had back in 2008, 2009, where these developer, developers started you know, trying to build all these new houses, and nobody bought them. And they all went belly up, and it was a terrible, terrible time for places like Arizona and Nevada. So that's a freight train crashing right off of the tracks. And it's interesting to watch the White House and their political response to this and where they're taking their, their wins. For example, again, Ron Klain today on the one-year year anniversary of saying inflation is a high-class problem was touting the fact that the Social Security is now issuing the I largest know. increase in cost of living adjustment as if that's a victory, uh, even though it's the largest since 1981 as a result of increased prices. I so think... they're clearly losing on this, and they intentionally are making things more expensive for Americans, which I don't think they're going to like uh, when they go to the polls. In by the way, m mortgage rates, 30-year mortgage over 7%. On Ron Klain, it's a great point. By the way, on that logic, uh, we ought to have 20% inflation. We want to have 40% inflation. You'll mm -hmm. get a bigger cost of living adjustment on Social Security. Oh, but wait a minute. Social Security will be bankrupt. Anyway, Charlie Hurt. Katie Pavlich, yeah. inflation won't work come November.